Hi everyone, Christina here, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own DIY Thanksgiving garland using your own tech laser. Now let's get started. So the designs that I will be making today in this video are actually available for free from the Ohm Tech website, so make sure to check it out and you can follow along as you go. This project is very customizable, so you can swap the different design elements if you like and make it really unique in you. I do want to touch base on how the file imports right into Lightburn. As you can see, we have all of the elements here. The layers over here you will have to set, but don't worry, I do call out how I have them set up in this file. So just a quick rundown. We have it organized by the design type. We have the turkey, the cornucopia with the pumpkin, and we have just a plain little leaf. And again, you can mix and match. In the example that I will be showing in this video, I will be using all three elements and I will be doing two of each. And there is also a downloadable instruction file that goes along with the file as well. And now I'm going to be showing you how I have it set up to use up a 12 by 20 sheet. And I have my layers set to line. And the reason why I am setting this to line is because I will be painting over it and I'll be showing you a quick example of the differences between the line and engrave. If we were to engrave it, it would be taking almost 50 minutes. And I really don't want to wait that long. I'd rather you know, score it, have an idea of where the outline is going to be so I can paint it. Set it to line, and as you can see, it's only like 10 minutes, so I'm okay with that for this video's purpose. So the step does actually take place prior to everything. I make sure that I load up my material. I have my little magnets here that's going to hold it in place. And I want to check my focal height to make sure that it is correct. Once I have my material loaded and I'm happy with the placement of my design, I'm going to frame it. and then I'm gonna be sending the job to my laser. I will be loading my design on the machine itself. And as a precaution, I always like to frame it on the machine just to make sure that it's in the correct location. Then I'm gonna click start. I would like to make note that doing the line instead of engrave makes a lot cleaner of a design compared to this over here. This is an example of an engrave that I did and you can see it's charred, it has some burnt edges. So I am actually really, really happy with how this line is going. It looks very simple, easy enough to do. It's just a matter of how we're gonna paint it now. I don't even really need to clean it much. There's like no char at all. I am going to be showing a couple different painting techniques that I have. Some are going to be using acrylic paints and others are going to be using these little paint pens that I have. First up, I'm going to be doing the pumpkins. And I'm going to be starting with some orange and reds and I'm going to be doing an outline in black. I would like to know after doing this design, which was the most time consuming out of all of them, you really need to have some fine tip markers or pens because the ones that I have are a little bit bulky so it's very very hard to stay in the lines especially when you have a very small score that you're working with. So if you plan on using this exact size and you're not like making it any larger I would definitely use some fine tip pens and markers for the outline. So 
I will be adding some accents with watered down orange acrylic paints just to give my leaf some flair. Now time for the outline, and this was the most tedious part. Again, this is where some fine tip markers would come in a whole lot of handy. And the good thing is, is it hides any mistakes that you have. And then for some finishing touches, I'm just going to sploosh some paint. I have some gold and some brown I'm going to be using. And I'm just going to kind of give it some depth because it's looking a little too flat to me. So I'm just going to gently dab, and I am going to water it down. And another tip that I like to use is a paper towel. Just kind of dab it. It gives it a nice spongy look, and I'm really, really loving how this comes out. You can also add highlights of white if you like. Now for the leaf. I'm going to be using some watered down acrylic paints and it gives it a watercolor look and you can actually see the paint disperse on the leaf as I'm painting. And I'm just going to gently dab with the paper towel. And I'm going to start adding some of my other colors. I have some browns, I have some oranges and some reds. And to finish the leaf up, I'm going to be using my brown acrylic paint pen, and I'm just going to be coloring in the lines. We're the cornucopia. Again, just using some watered down brown paint. I would like to note that with this particular design, I did add some black accents later on just because I lost the clips for it, so it was pretty unfortunate. These are the two processes for painting that I've really been enjoying, so I'm going to be following the same type of thing for the turkey as well. And for glue, I'm going to be using Starbond. I'm just going to be gluing the little pieces on. And to string it all together, I'm using some of this twine that I have. And I am going to be doing a double layer of it just because it's very thin. And I'm going to be taping the tip together to make it easier for it to string through and feed through the designs. And I'm actually, when I'm feeding it through the design, I want to make sure that the string is primarily going behind it. So you're not going to, it's not going to ruin the design. You're not going to see it in front. The only thing you're going to see in front is when you loop it over to the other design. And the twine that I did use is probably about six feet, a little bit more than six feet. Now I'm going to be adding it to our fireplace. And it does help to have an extra set of hands. Kudos to my mom for helping me out. And because wood is heavy, you do want to position it in a way where it's kind of flat against the, the mantle that it's on. The other option is you can go ahead and play around, move the holes, customize the designs to fit your particular mantle or fireplace or wherever you're going to be putting this. And in all, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I think next time what I'd probably do different is consider the weight of the material used. Thinner wood would probably be lighter versus thicker wood, so it is something to consider early on if you plan on making this project because it can be a little bit top heavy, so just keep that in mind when you're cutting it. 
I really appreciate everybody for watching and following along. You can download this file on the OMTech website and follow along, customize, and make your own DIY Thanksgiving garland. Thank you. Have an awesome day.